Hi, I'm Stefan Baril, a Senior Solution Consultant at Adobe France. Um, I came from the uh, Fine Art Academies and I did a lot of design uh, work in uh, advertising agencies and different kind of, uh, of work in design industry. And I was also previously teacher in fashion school during four years in Paris. Uh, and also I wrote several books on how to co-write comic uh, books uh, in French. Uh, so let's go in the details. So uh, I will divide uh, the uh, this session in three uh, main parts. So the first one will be uh, trying to defining uh, color to to better understand what's happened after when we uh, we have to uh, apply color and to mix them. So having some notion of perception of color is really important. Uh, the second part will be also theoretical uh, with a lot of uh, example uh, on um, uh, the uh, color harmony rules. And the last one will be uh, some demo exp uh, explaining how to use that in uh, Creative Cloud software and app and services. So let's start. Uh, effectively, you heard a lot about this dress. Uh, uh, I will not transfer to the, to a question why, uh, but I will give you the uh, the information to understand by yourself. And by the way, if you didn't achieve achieve to to answer by yourself, just uh, just uh, ask to your search engine, and uh, you you will find the answer. Uh, by the way. So uh, let's try to define color. For first, the, the color uh, could be divided in, in, uh, in different kind of uh, properties. So the first one we will study will, will be the cultural part. It's also physical uh, properties and it's uh, mental construction. So let's focus on the cultural part. So if if I ask uh, to every everybody uh, uh, in, the, in this session uh, to visualize a green apple regarding your uh, your region, regarding the country, regarding the varieties or the importation, is it natural? Is, is it uh, uh, you know a, a big industry uh, behind that? Uh, perhaps a green apple will be this one for you, but for another one that could be this one or this one or this other one is still a green apple it's not it's not exactly the same as the previous one but not, not the same state but it's it's also a green apple so defining color by an object reference is not at all relevant when we need to talk color and you 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 probably heard a lot uh, about you know uh, referencing you know color about uh, for example blue uh, sky, blue sky or uh, uh, blue ocean or something like that but that doesn't mean any anything at all that could be just a mood uh, if we have a common reference and common culture but that's not relevant so we need to. Uh, to, um, to, to look at, her, at one of our aspects, which is the physical one. So every, everybody uh, just uh, uh, learned at school uh, this uh, Newton experiment. Uh, if, uh, if a white light uh, through, uh, through uh, inside a prism, that will decompose uh, the white light into the spectrum of colors. And we also learned that uh, thanks to the additive color system that if you add more uh, light, so here uh, the, the primary one, the RGB, uh, red, uh, red, green and blue, uh, more and more you add light, more and more you have a vivid, uh, vivid light and so it's a, it's a white. So we all know that. So what's the impact of that uh, in our uh, in our vision. So first of all, um, I just tried to uh, to sum up there are some principle. But if you want to have a, a clear and deep understanding on this principle, uh, I really encourage you and recommend you uh, to take a look at the YouTube channel and the and the website of the uh, Dr. Greg uh, Blackwell. So it's uh, it's uh, really amazing. It's that uh, that helped me to deeply understand uh, what's going on in this in this environment. So just as a remember, our eye is a is a complex tool, and at the bottom uh, of our eye we have a retina, and uh, and the main area to uh, for the color and to, to focus is the fovea. So you you can see this uh, this uh, this square, and in this region at the bottom in uh, in the black background you can see a regression from uh, from Craig Blackwell uh, that we have uh, on this part some roads. Uh, so roads are sensible to dim light, so 
our peripheral. Uh, and we have also some uh, some uh, some cells uh, like cones and uh, three kind of cones, uh, so sensible to something close to blue, to green, and to red. So and this is uh, and these cones are dedicated to bright light, by the way. Uh, and during a long time, I, uh, I, I read a lot, a lot of articles and uh, and a lot of debates uh, um, on um, two opposite theories. So the first one was the trichromatic uh, cones theory, so uh, w uh, which I just explained, and the other one was. Uh, the cone opponent uh, theory, and during a long time, uh, my understanding was that was an opposed, you know, theory. Uh, and in this uh, theory, uh, in fact, cells are described like sensible uh, to two opposite colors, so yellow and blue, uh, red and uh, and green, but also, you know, uh, dark and 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 light uh, uh, also. Uh, but in fact, uh, uh, Dr. Blackwell explains that better than me, but uh, in, um, inside the ganglion cell on the top of uh, the, this, uh, this middle there, in the ganglion cell, uh, you have a, a first processing by, by, by these cells, uh, which convert these three signals via complex, uh, complex equations, uh, and convert uh, in this opponent uh, con retina uh, processing. So our first processing is is done in uh, inside your uh, your retina, and uh, all this information uh, through the uh, opti optical optic nerve uh, arrive to your cortex, and another processing, the final processing, are done there. So, like you, you can see uh, in the visible, uh, electromagnetic, uh, visible spectrum, uh, visible by the human eye. Uh, just a portion of the of these electromagnetic waves is visible, and we have a complex processing uh, inside our, our, our you know our eyes and our brain to uh, to create the color. So we can say easily that uh, color is is mental construction. And to demonstrate this this cone opponent uh, processing, uh, I would like to ask you to to focus on the on this uh, dot at the middle, this uh, gray dot, and please try to to don't uh, unfocus to 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 stay concentrated at the same level of intensity on this dot uh, and the same uh, level of depth of field, and stay uh, no matter what's happened, keep stay focused at the same intensity in this dot and in this dot only. So if you stay focused, you, you, you can see uh, this, uh, this color, uh, the opposite color, uh, are persistence. We name that after image or persistent color. So uh, that's this processing and that's just there to demonstrate that, uh, in my presentation, to demonstrate that uh, our brain constrict effect uh, effectively and compensates some, some color. So if it's a mental constriction, and let me uh, go um, uh, deeper in this in this notion. Effectively, your brain balances light and color uh, variation according to the context. Uh, we can say to the temperature of color and to the evolution of the light uh, during the day uh, or artificial light in the night. Uh, if we split the situation of uh, light and shadow, so uh, grayscale environment, black and white environment, and the color. We can see in some uh, is uh, here some uh, uh, some some optical illusion, uh, and uh, that's the balance of your brain that creates this optical illusion. Thanks to Edward H. Adelson to to uh, hold on me to uh, to use his uh, illustration, and he has a lot a lot a lot of good stuff also on his website. So uh, please take a look, uh, and uh, you will be amazed by this one. So ask for I, I will ask for you for yourself uh, because I couldn't see your answer. Uh, what you really see, what your brain indicates you, not what you expect. But I think I guess uh, right. You you see uh, the the b uh, the b square uh, of this checker uh, lighter than the e square, and uh, and guess what? I think I think you guess. But it's exactly the same the same color. 
The reason is pretty simple. You have some uh, some shadows coming from the, the this right cylinder, uh, this cylinder at the right, and uh, these shadows just uh, cover all the B uh, patches patch, and also uh, part of the, the patch uh, the, of the checker uh, around this this B. So our brain uh, understands there is a shadow and makes some compensation. So now if I'm coming back in the slide uh, at the previous slide. Even if you 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 deeply know understand the concept and what's happened, your eye continue and your brain continue to to uh, to to tell you that that B is lighter than he. So your brain do a mental construction of the color and compensate the environment. If we take a look at this uh, at this uh, this painting and illustration from uh, uh, from jo by Joanna Hitten. Uh, you can you can see a lot uh, of work on uh, on on his art and also he wrote uh, a Brian book on color color theory how to apply that and uh, uh, really encourage you to to take a look on that if you want to to know uh, know more than I can cover in this session uh, about experimenting with color. So you can see there are two uh, two blue square. We uh, on different uh, on two different uh, uh, backgrounds uh, colored square uh, square. Uh, so at the at the left, uh, the, the 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 blue uh, the, the blue square uh, seems to be just uh, not so contrasty uh, compared to 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 the one at the right, and seem to be closely at the same level. Uh, and perhaps uh, in, uh, regarding the depth of field, seems like to be a little bit. Uh, like a window inside this green stuff. Uh, at the opposite, the, the the blue square on the on the orange one seems to be uh, seems to pop up a little bit and to be more flashy than uh, than the uh, uh, the one in the in the green background. And uh, I think, like you expect, uh, it's exactly the same square. Uh, but the environment uh, of color, the temperature around, and the proportion is really important. To illustrate the proportion stuff, I just put some uh, two uh, two big uh, two big square with with two uh, two dots, same color, but just uh, uh, swapping the, the the background and the foreground color. So here you can imagine, and you're high because it's side by side, cool imagine, but. If you focus on one and then to another, you probably see effectively that this blue doesn't seem. If you focus on the the the, the blue circle in the, the orange background, doesn't seem to be at the same uh, the same blue and the same uh, 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 lightness than the other one blackness. And so the environment and the proportion is really important. Now, if we if we focus on the on the blue circle uh, in an orange background. If we if we uh, lighten a little bit or darken a little bit or, or, or more of the the background, but we we keep this this blue circle, it doesn't seem uh, it doesn't seem never you know uh, it, it it doesn't seem equal uh, even if it's exactly the same. The contrast, the environment, the perception uh, doesn't seem the, the same. So uh, on top of that, uh, for uh, for your evolution uh, reason and for different reason, uh, our brain um, makes some color constancy uh, around uh, this this color. Imagine something dangerous, for example, or fruits in in the nature, uh, in the wild, and. Uh, you need to uh, to recognize immediately the, uh, the dangerousness of these fruits, uh, but if we uh, if we um, uh, if you just remember during the day, uh, just just take a step back and imagine during the day uh, at uh, early at the morning at the uh, at twelve a.m. or uh, at the night with different uh, color ambience of uh, of the light, for example, some blue light, some yellow light uh, during the night, or if the weather is different. Your brain continue to to see these uh, these fruits uh, in the same color, uh, and that's really important uh, regarding the temperature of, of the color because these fruits are you know uh, um, uh, have some uh, you know uh, some change with uh, which are consistent with the environment. Imagine you have a, a, a orange light. Uh, your main object, your fruits, dangerous fruits, have. Uh, uh, 
he's impacted by this uh, this uh, this ambient light but also the environment so your brain could make a, a white balance like we 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 said in in in, uh, in photoshop or in lightroom so to illustrate that more uh to um, to illustrate that more uh um with more evidence, uh, we can take a look at uh, this uh, cathedral of Rouen, uh, all the cathedrals in Europe, and I think, uh, uh, and several uh, in over a part of of, of, the, of the globe, uh, have some facades, some stone, um, which uh, which are white white beige in general, like this one. A famous painter uh, named Claude Monet, I think everybody knows his name. Um, Put his chevalet uh, uh, in uh, in a room front of this uh, of this cathedral, and decided to study the light and design the variation of the light during uh, during the different period of uh, of the year, during pe different period of the day, different weather, and and he did a study uh, about that. So uh, now we're talking about color. So you are really aware and careful about that, but. If I voluntarily just leave uh, leave some space between these two, uh, you your brain uh, yes imagine because you have some some visual uh, you know there the impact of the uh, of uh, of the light is equal in all of these different kind of painting. So uh, I still continue to see and to imagine this this tone uh, beige and white beige and gray, and it's the same there. That's uh, only if I, I put all side by side that I could see the, a clear difference because our brain uh, has the ability to, to see two, uh, two, um, two, uh, uh, two close colors uh, just side by side or just one after another uh, in, in a time. That's the reason why uh, I, um, I leave empty slides uh, between, the, uh, between two paintings. Uh, if not, your brain will will immediately uh, see the difference, and uh, and this consistency uh, couldn't be demonstrated. So what's really important, uh, remember. So we can try to define the color by cultural aspect, by physical aspect, and by mental construction and compensation. So what's really matter? So first of all, uh, just as a disclaimer. Of course, if you work uh, in in a color industry for a print design or for for designing for a screen, you need first to uh, to, uh, to to calibrate your screen and you need to to use color management system. But that's not the purpose of this. For me, that's that's a fact. You need to calibrate your stuff to be sure that your your screen will be optimized, even if you have some issues. It will be optimized in the limit of the restitution of the color of your screen, and you need to calibrate also and to uh, to, to calibrate also your your printing uh, engine or your printer, etc. etc. So what's really matter uh, if color management is there? That just avoid a bunch a bunch of of possible mistake. So you reduce the possibilities of trouble. But you have some differences uh, by default in different screen, uh, in different uh, print paper are not the same white uh, one paper to another and the ink. Uh, so you, you have some adjustment, but we want to just avoid uh, to have a, a clear, um, clear misinterpretation of color. So what's really matter in the theory of color, in the uh, harmony, uh, harmony is rules regarding the, the color, is the ambience and uh, as in a movie it's really it's really important to have uh, to have a mood to have a flavor in your color in your movie and this mood this flavor need to match with your story by the way so just just for yourself if i ask you uh what color what mood of uh what flavor of color do you have in mind if i if i say blade runner my expectation uh, is you probably guess or remember some brownish color, dark color, you know, uh, and and perhaps in the high tech environment more uh, bluish color, you know, more electrics. Uh, if I ask you again, for example, uh, to think about the color of uh, Gataka, of a Gataka movie, if you don't know, just take a look online uh, on your search engine, uh, you probably uh, will say uh, white, uh, blue, you know, more scientist, aseptical environment. And now if uh, I ask you a more um, 
a more well-known and cross uh, a cross culture and uh, well-known movie like Matrix, I think the clear uh, answer will be green, and for a good reason, because uh, in this movie, when you are in the Matrix uh, and you can see the number, you can see behind the Matrix, it's a green environment of letters, you know, of character, uh, but. It's not only in this vision, uh, in the behind the scene of the Matrix. It's also in the vision of the Matrix, in the Matrix itself. You have this grading, this color grading, which is is greenish inside. But even if it's greenish, and here it's it's pretty obvious because I, I put all these images side by side for for the demonstration purpose. But Effectively, if we take a look at, at some other scene in the movie, that doesn't that doesn't mean that you need to have exactly the same color grading in all the movie. Uh, it's like it's like in a music. If you have the same color grading, uh, take a look at teal orange uh, movie in in internet or in the inspiration um, by color uh, tag in my delicious. I will uh, put uh, give you the the link at at the end, and you you'll find. Effectively, some uh, some uh, uh, some excessive use in blog in American blockbusters. That's not the case here in Matrix, and because because they create a rhythm in in inside this uh, uh, this element. So in some blockbuster, it's exactly the same color. So for me, it's it's like you know having having the uh, a sound uh, waveform, but not uh, you know with variation like that, but at the same level with few variation. It's no more music. It's more a noise, a sound, a noisy sound. So if you really want to, uh, you know, to have a rhythm, you need you need to have variation. And in fact, if you take a closer look at this uh, uh, extracting scene of the of, of the Matrix, inside the uh, the virtual training environment, you could have some different kind of atmosphere and color uh, because you are in the unreal world and. Every participant well knows that, but in the real world, which is the the dangerous part uh, of this universe, it's it's you know a cold color, it's a bluish, uh, and it's a dangerous part. So you have this color grading in this scene. So even if you you are deeply involved in the movie, unconsciously you 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 have a clear indication. On where you are, even if it's not so, uh, you know, uh, obvious at first, and even if uh, the the director play with you, indicating you or not, just uh, just on some uh, subtle change of color, you can guess where you are uh, if you take a look uh, twice in this movie. So, final picture ambience is the goal of a uh, color theory, and we will go now in the second part uh, of this session about uh, this theory and these harmonies of color. So, talking about that, we have a powerful tool to understand uh, that world, and and probably you already uh, saw the, uh, two 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 of uh, uh, two different kind of color wheel. The, the well-known color wheel by by painters are uh, the one created and uh, and developed by Johannes Hitten. Uh, or it, uh, we uh, talked uh, about him uh, in a few slides uh, um, uh, pre in previous uh, slides. Uh, this one is dedicated to painting. Whole painting essentially, and uh, the difference with uh, the the one we will use at the right uh, is that uh, perhaps you you already know about painting, uh, uh, painting and color in general. When you want to reproduce uh, painting or ink, uh, are uh, a pigment. Uh, you know, uh, encapsulate in a medium. And in painting, for oil painting, for example, the medium is opaque, it's not transparent at all. And the medium uh, makes some influence uh, on this color. So, uh, and in the nature, the, the, pigment, uh, the, the pigments sorry, are not uh, pure at all. So, you need to have some primary color, a little bit different because of that difference of the reaction of the medium uh, there and, and the whole. 
So, but in the, uh, in the ideal uh, world of digital and painting, where the, 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 the pigment are inside the ink, ink is transparent by default. Uh, so, in this pure environment, you could have primary, uh, primary and secondary pro uh, color. Primary, so RGB, uh, red, uh, green, and blue, and uh, the complementary color, secondary color, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So, for the rest of this presentation, we will use this one because we work in digital even if we print. So we will use this one. We also need, with this uh, beautiful tool, to have a common language to, to talk between, uh, between designer, between uh, you and your customer, and we, we need to have a common, uh, common uh, denomination, uh, common language. We already uh, explained that green apple doesn't mean anything, except if we have the same green, uh, green apple, we are in the same room, and we, we can see, uh, uh, all the attendees can see the same, uh, exactly the same uh, apple, for example, green apple. So the convention name is HSB, it's, uh, or HSL, depending of your language. So UK and, uh, and US have not the same translation, so depending on uh, you, and depending also, uh, some experts have a lot of deb debates uh, about uh, lightness, brightness, luminosity. So I don't want to take part of these debates, so just to let you know, it's the same thing. If you, if you see HSB or HSL, it's the same concept, not the same thing, and same thing in the vocabulary. Here, a small illustration, it's not, uh, it's not a, a perfect, but just a small illustration I done in Photoshop uh, uh, 3D. Uh, so to represent that uh, in a 3D environment. So at the, uh, you can see there a U, the U are this vivid color, and, and you can desaturate. So, um, so desaturation is uh, when this color became become more and more gray at the center and if you help uh, the light turn on uh, turn on the light but really uh, at the at, at the at the high intensity that become pastel and white at the end and at the opposite when you dun the light that become darker and darker and that became black so this is the free uh, the, the free common language we can use so let's go deeper in each each one. So uh, U is, is there, so U is, uh, for example, in Photoshop, uh, in the U saturation, um, uh, U saturation adjustment, you can see uh, this band, this uh, big band, and you can offset a little bit the tint, so you can you can see this one and this one will, will loop there. Uh, and if you put that in a circle, you have uh, 360 degree, uh, degrees uh, there in this color wheel. So that's the color wheel, and by default, this is the color you can you already uh, we already uh, seen in the visible spectrum and you can see that also in the rainbow uh, and by the way uh, the magenta is the montage construction uh, it's not in the rainbow uh, just uh, just to say so here this is uh, this is a website captured in 2000, 2007 when uh, I did the first edition of this of this session so I pick online some uh, website uh, to to explain. I, I continue to use because this uh, uh, this is this uh, website are a really a good ex illustration of every uh, every uh, rule I will I will demonstrate. And uh, and by the way, also uh, it's not to to create a, uh, to to create a controversy. But if you take a look right now in uh, generally in a website. Uh, we are more based on CMS and more on templates, and a lot of templates have, uh, you know, a simple background or just a smooth gradient, uh, black, gray, white, and uh, some color just for buttons or significant. And the main focus is on is your content, like in my slide. Take a look. I talk about color, so to to uh, to um, to make to 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 create a focus on the color. All my background are just gray and pure. So we have that uh, on the website. So that doesn't mean there is no website with color, but it's pretty difficult for me to to find uh, over uh, sample. So that's the reason why um, I'm still on this one. 
And this one uh, is a, a collective of artists. And to refer to uh, the beginning of the color uh, in, uh, in in internet, where uh, few color were available, uh, was available, available, and that was the primary and secondary color, and also the the pixel uh, uh, the pixel uh, look also of the site. So that was a reference at this period, and I like I like this uh, this clin d'œil. Uh, so, and I just discovered a few weeks ago the, the excellent work. I, I really love with uh, with her work of uh, Liz Liz West. Uh, just you know, bringing some uh, some vivid and bright light, like we you, we saw in this uh, in this color wheel and in the rainbow. And I really really would like to be uh, in one of her exhibition because it's that that's I think the. Uh, uh, that that uh, the feeling inside of this unreal uh, light, even if the light contain all this all of this range of color, I think to be uh, in in that uh, in that mood uh, will be great. And I also discovered a few days ago uh, this this beautiful uh, piece of art from Gabriel Do. Uh, same thing, uh, he did a lot of form of variation. So you have a simple line, um, you know, attached to uh, to uh, to two border, and just each line have uh, a slightly different uh, color from the neighbor, and it's a beautiful rainbow uh, inside the environment. So. Yeah, just just amazing, just beautiful for me. So that wouldn't wine. I shown you this one. So saturation. Let's uh, let's talk about saturation again. Um, saturation. So uh, at uh, at the border on the on this circle. So we have the U at uh, vividity of most powerful vividity, like uh, when uh, Newton uh, de decomposed the, the, the white light in different colors. It's a pure light. Uh, but effectively, uh, in painting, uh, the, the painter, when they, they, they want to desaturate a little bit uh, color they pick, from uh, from the tube outside uh, just uh, at the uh, exit of the tube, uh, they didn't had to 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 become gray uh, uh, a mix of black and, uh, black and white because that doesn't um, that that will you know um, give you some uh, some weird gray and just a dirt gray that 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 will not be really uh, an interesting color. So if you want to desaturate a little bit. Just add the complementary color, so at the opposite of the circle, at the direct opposite opposition, at 180 degree, and you will uh, desaturate automatically the color, and that will be more interesting uh, uh, gray. Uh, by uh, by the way, and here it's not it's not a, a fake gray uh, at the at the center. Just try uh, in your uh, preferred uh, software that could be Photoshop, that could be uh, uh, InDesign, Illustrator. Just draw a simple rectangle and put a gradient on it with only two points, the beginning and the end, and put two opposite colors with uh, vivid, so blue and yellow or what you want, and you will have at the center by default a gray. So uh, that's also a physical part. And at the right, this is one illustration I did with Illustrator and Gradient Mesh. Uh, and it's a, a pure optical mix there and physical mix. Uh, and I didn't uh, had uh, by myself some some effect, if some uh, some uh, shitting effect at the center uh, as a center to to have gray. That's a pure visual result from uh, this uh, this gradient. So here in 2007, the Apple French website uh, portal. Uh, so here, except uh, the, the picture, the picture could change. Uh, so I'm I'm thinking about the, the color used in the website, like a uh, color guide. Uh, you can realize when you extract that uh, I use the, the recolor artwork uh, uh, feature uh, to uh, an image twist to uh, to analyze in Illustrator of this uh, this website at this period. And so you have an extraction of the color. So it's it's a blue, the same blue, we name that uh, sometimes a camayo, uh, with different kind of saturation and luminosity on it, but essentially a different kind of satur desaturation there. Uh, lightness, brightness, uh, it's like I said, just down the light or just turn on the, the light and you have pastel if you turn on the light and if it's 
true light, uh, true, uh, true light. So you have white, and at the opposite, you have bright, bright. And on this website, you also have this um, uh, this usage of the orange and darker parts there, and uh, and some saturation, uh, some uh, some also desaturation there. And you 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 you'll see in uh, in several slides also we have also a contour point of color. This is the complementary color, but we will uh, coming back on that uh, later. So now let's start to uh, to see the uh, the uh, the principles uh, the principal color harmonies uh, there. So the first one is the cameo. I will do, really explain that. So simple example there in the same slide. So monochromatic, it's one color, but you you could add saturation and, and lightness, or add or uh, subtract so saturation lightness, and you you will have a contrasty color, but not really, not a lot, of, not not with variation, you know. And generally, the shadow are not exactly the same color and middle tone and in the sky. So it's a, it's a fake environment, but it's it could be effective if you want to 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 create an old age, for example, picture. Yeah, some sepia look. The real first uh, rule uh, rule is the complementary color. So we already saw that. Uh, in the U saturation feature in Photoshop, I will demonstrate that uh, later. Uh, you can just push this, uh, offset uh, a little bit this at uh, 180 degrees, and you will have the matching color, the opposite color there, and you will have that more clearly in this color wheel. So here, um, you know, uh, here this is a, a double page uh, from the Paris Brothers. Uh, so you have two uh, different kind of uh, of environment. The the outside, which is uh, clearly insecure, and uh, which is cold, and you have the inside, which is you know a secure place uh, with a warm light, etc. So uh, even if we uh, they use these two separate color again. Don't, uh, that doesn't mean you need, if you want to create a, a contrast by color, that doesn't mean you need to have this vividity. You can just down the brightness or, or desaturate a little bit to create a contrast and to enhance this primary choice. So here an example of a website. So you have a clear uh, opposition there, uh, the blue and uh, and the orange. The orange is the dominant, and you have also in different pages some uh, some hyperlink for uh, driving you to different sections. Uh, and here this uh, this part of the of the, the browser background is not a pure gray. It's an orange uh, with uh, with some brightness and desaturation on it. And by the way, uh, the famous Vincent Van Gogh, uh, in his uh, Starry, uh, Starry Night, also used this uh, this association there uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 play with uh, with this light, with the stars, with the moon. And if you if you look uh, uh, in some details, you can see a different kind of color, but. It's the the rule is applied to the globality. That doesn't mean you if you use a rule you haven't the right to use a color. But the dominant there is is clearly a complementary color. If you want to um, to uh, to go away a little bit from this clear opposition, you can use the split complementary color. So here, for example, in this in this uh, little character, you can see it's 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 clearly uh, you know uh, some orange, but again with some desaturation and some lightness in it. And to to amplify the the, the background, the environment. Uh, we they, they didn't uh, the, the artist she didn't didn't choose just one color, just the opposite color, but also enrich the environment, the shadows and the stuff, with the uh, neighbor color, we name that analogous color. Uh, and here this website also used this, uh, this thing, so King Tut uh, used uh, in 2007 uh, this, uh, this range of color for the, 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 the ambience, uh, the, the atmosphere, and some contour points there uh, for the button and for section and some piece in this hieroglyph. So now let's pretend we have uh, we have uh, in this story three main characters, so, uh, so main principal character and other secondary uh, character. If you if we want to clearly identify 
uh, inconsciously the the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the reader will uh, clearly identify this three character. We could uh, select three opposite color, and for three people, it's a triangle on this color wheel. So here, voluntarily, uh, highly vivid, highly saturated. Here, a little bit desaturated, but but it's not the, the, the good shows there. But I would just would like to amplify a little bit the, the fact that you need to you have the choice to use also desaturated and to play with desaturation and brightness. So, for example, in this website, uh, I like also this uh, this old uh, sample I, I found in 2007 because because that illustrates perfectly that you you are also allowed to use that to separate section on your website section of your book chapter, for example, and you could have some different environment and and the uh, and the reader just turning the page no unconsciously that he is unconsciously that he is or not uh, in the right chapter. So and if you have if you have four principal uh, four principal character you could use a square so we name that tetra colors. Uh, this sample is also interesting because when you try to analyze this website entirely, so again using uh, image trace and uh, recolor artwork, at the beginning uh, it didn't seem to to use a clear rule. If I push the saturation, now I can see a pattern, a certain symmetry. But in fact, if you split the screen in two parts, at the bottom, uh, at the top, you have you have a, a complementary color, a blue and a teal and orange there. And at the bottom, this is four sections. If you click on it, you, you arrived in four different sections of, of the website. So if you just focus on that and you are, uh, uh, by, uh, by analysis this color and you push the saturation, you will see that clearly we use uh, this, this rules. And you can add more, so three, four, and now more and more. And that was the case of our, our, our design team uh, when they, they, they did some research for CS6. Before that, you, you'll see in this link in CS5 that was a little bit random, the choice of a color. That was more, you know, a, a, a mood, you know, they pick some color, but that was no, no uh, homogenization and no occurrence between the usage. So they start to, to use this, uh, this, uh, this, this first. Um, First repetition to uh, to equalize the, uh, uh, the the color, but in fact again the the rule are not uh, a dictator. Uh, you pick the rule you want. You choose the the prime uh, the, the the inspirational color, and you play with that. You can mix. I already said, so uh, demonstrate that you can mix different color. And here, uh, if you take a look at this sample, you can see there is some. Some different, uh, you know, uh, distances between this, uh, this, and and this one. Take a look and think, a step back and think about that. We uh, had to be uh, um, communicate a lot on screen, and our our logo are visible on screen in your um, in your you know in your dock or in your lunch bar, but. We also need some time to to have some uh, some posters or printing poster and stuff like that. And if you are a print designer, if you know a little bit of the printing, you know this range of of, of green couldn't be really reproduced. And uh, so, if I need to print two lo two logo really close in this kind of green, that will uh, that will lack uh, will be uh, close color uh, colors there. So that was the why we didn't put any logo there to to have the ability to have a clear distinction in the printing uh, environment. So you need to make some choices and after all, step back and make some adjustments regarding your head, uh, your height, your sensibility, your mood. So all these rules was, uh, except the first one, monochromatic, was uh, based on opposition. Opposition, uh, so one, one to one, one, uh, so three, three character, four character, uh, a bunch of. But you, you have also different uh, rules like analogous colors. Analogous color is, you know, just the name of color from the, the one you pick. So here you have two sample, two t-shirt design sample, um, uh, um, uh, which use the uh, was use the uh, this principle. 
And here, even if you can see the range is really close between these, these colors, there is different kind of saturation, uh, there is different kind of, uh, of uh, brightness, and uh, this, this dark, uh, dark, the brightness, the contrast of the color and the saturation and brightness uh, make this really contrasting and really powerful, even if we use uh, a small range of the spectrum. And one of the masters of, of studying the, the, the limit of shape and uh, by color and how color mix and how the, the, the vision works uh, in the artistic way uh, was Mark Rothko. And uh, if you don't know his work, please take a closer look because uh, uh, if you're interested in experimenting with color, uh, he did a lot of stuff and you need to take a look on it. And uh, to conclude this section, I have two, two, two more slides. Uh, this one just to, uh, to demonstrate one thing, that's uh, a frequent question, after all. So here again, uh, uh, um, Perry's brother's uh, illustration at the bottom, is, it's the original one in the comic book. And uh, at the top, I, j I just converted in grayscale this, this picture to demonstrate that an ambience, an atmosphere, is already there in the black and white. So black and white doesn't mean you didn't have any atmosphere, but you uh, you could clearly uh, see the difference with color. The color will um, make the emphasis and will uh, um, will um, render the uh, the the impression of the insecurity again. The fire, which is warm, which is secure, because you know predators, you know, generally are afraid about that. And the blue of uh, this uh, this dangerous place uh, and unsecure place is really uh, uh, unfazed, uh, unfocused uh, uh, in this in this part. So color is really meaningful and had values definitively, uh, if you want it. Uh, again, that doesn't mean black and white doesn't doesn't mean anything. That just means, for example, now we, you, you, we know that black and white, uh, you know, uh, leave you uh, outside the uh, the time for different reason. Cultural, for example, uh, we know that uh, we have all uh, the experience of all picture, all movie in black and white. So culturally, black and white uh, could mean you know all movies, all photography. And uh, and and also, uh, if if uh, the director of a movie or if a, if a photograph uh, cut the color, that means also something that uh, that uh, let you just put your own color and and uh, leave your imagination uh, do the do the rest and focus on just the value and the subtlety of the light. And here it's it's no more no more about the the the, the, the color theory rule, but just some usage of color to uh, to close this chapter. If you take a look at some uh, uh, famous painting by Rembrandt, but take a look also as, at his drawing. We all uh, we all know that if you take a look around you at something and focus on something, for perhaps uh, perhaps a can of soda, perhaps something your screen, perhaps the thing. If you really focus on that. All around become blurry, and all also become blurry in the depth of field. So and so, we could use that uh, in the design, or adding more details in your drawing uh, at the center there, because uh, that's the main uh, the, the main place, the other thing of the ambience and the context. And so you, you have more details in the drawing and more details in the color, and and uh, far you go. You have less details in the drawing and less details uh, in the color, so less color used and same at, at, the, t at, at the front uh, there. And we also know that uh, there, is a, there is a concept named atmospheric perspective. We know when you have a landscape, far you go, far the, 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 the background, the mountain, the, la the lake, or all the, all the, the stuff uh, uh, far, far away, uh, take Take pieces of the color of uh, of uh, of uh, the atmosphere, so of the, the sky. So we reduce and we lighten a little bit the color, and we desaturate a little bit the color. Far you go. Uh, so that's some principle, and this one is just to remember uh, to, to to create and remember uh, to remembering you that even if this rule is the co uh, coherent uh, reality, it's not the real reality uh, that could be. Here, 
uh, Knights, my co-writer in his uh, comic book. Uh, this is uh, uh, a direct draw, a direct uh, painting, uh, and not a digital one. Uh, he had more details and more colorful stuff there, even if. Normally, visually, that, that doesn't need to be there, just to focus our attention on this part because the emperor is really important in this and on, on, on this story. So now let's let's go uh, inside uh, inside the, the demo part and let's see how to apply that uh, inside a, a Creative Cloud app uh, software and uh, and service the Creative Cloud itself. So here we are in InDesign. Uh, I, I will uh, I will first uh, jump in uh, in a website in the website uh, Adobe website uh, there. So if you logged in in the Adobe.com or dot, uh, dot, uh, your country, <laughs> uh, you have your creative profile. So your profile attached to your email address and all your stuff on it. So the file, the assets you can put in your uh, in your uh, Creative Cloud folder and synced between your different uh, uh, device and uh, computer. Uh, and you have also colors and libraries, uh, two, two main focus there in this session, colors essentially, and libraries to share some colors, some, some assets. So if you go in colors, you have three sections, create, explore, and my teams. Uh, create is for uh, creating, you know, uh, some color harmony. So just jumping, playing with a color like that. So defining also some value, RGB, exa, lab, CMYK. Uh, and you can use, so this is a custom because I can put that where I want. Uh, but you can use analogic color like uh, like we already saw in the in the in the different tool. You can uh, push a little bit. You can use tetradi compound shades, etc. etc. Uh, so that's a way to to create the color. But that could be convenient uh, to uh, to use also a picture as a reference. So just uh, just for this story, this uh, this um, this website was introduced uh, in the time frame of CS3 uh, with a feature we will uh, we will see in uh, in Illustrator uh, later uh, and uh, was named uh, Cooler because in France uh, color or coolers uh, uh, are spelled cooler and that's the reason why so that was a French reference so now it's no more cooler but Adobe Color CC uh, so here at the, at the right you can say create from image so if you are if you have a picture, uh, so here I'm in a browser. So just remember, I'm in a browser. That could be a Mac, a Windows. That could be uh, what you want. That could be also a phone, a tablet, uh, Android, uh, what you want. So here, by default, uh, this uh, this color uh, website uh, helps you to to find uh, the five more colorful uh, color. But that could be based on brightness, on muted, so desaturated, and deep dark color or dark. So that's a choice by default. But you you could customize uh, and pick your own choice right there. So it's. It's pretty simple. You can enhance a little bit that, so you can uh, save that, give give it a name, uh, save it. Uh, you can uh, edit that uh, and come back to this uh, to this environment, uh, or you have the ability uh, also to to by default it's private. It's just for you and your your space. You're logged in, so that's only for you. But you can uh, share that, uh, make that public. So in the explore section that will be available for everyone. You can add favorites. This one is your favorite in yours, in yours. And in the explore section, you also have that. You can download it uh, and stuff like that. Add comment, etc. So now, if you have that in mind, uh, we can use that inside the Adobe software. Uh, this service is no more a, an online service where you can just download, uh, you know, an Adobe Swatch action. So it's a file format to to share uh, to share uh, swatches uh, between uh, InDesign, Photoshop, Resorter, Flash, and different software at uh, Adobe software. So now you you don't need to download to to come back in the Swatch panel and to say uh, through the flyout menu uh, load. You you have the ability to have this color just inside your Adobe software. So if you take a look there, we have a new panel uh, available for the uh, window menu. So it's uh, it's uh, their color uh, Adobe color theme. And you have the, the create function. You have also explore, so the community stuff, and my stuff. So if I have 
yes, uh, yeah, a clear color. So this is the color I just created. So no need to, to do some, you know, so complicated stuff that's already available. I can uh, edit the theme. So to, to, to modify that in Create, I can add to my Swatches panel. I can add to my favorite. I can view that online, etc., etc. So it's available there. So in InDesign, we had uh, we we just added also another thing. Uh, sometimes I don't want to to go to go online to to create this uh, this color harmony like I did there. So here you have a new tool which is named uh, color uh, uh, co color uh, theme uh, tool. That uh, color because I'm in the UK version of InDesign, but uh, color if you are in a, in US version, and you have the ability. I already did that in this one. You have the ability to click on a picture. Uh, and to uh, and to use this picture as a, as a reference. So let's try to use, for example, this one. Okay, this one was in the, locked in my background, so that's the reason why I didn't have access to the color. And if I go there, you can clearly see that the rule you use there is to pick the colorful one. That we also have dark and muted, like in a website. So with that in mind, you you could just save this color uh, in your uh, in your swatches panel. So here we are. Uh, by default, if you double click on the color tool, you have the, the, um, the possibility to make some choice. By default, it's, it's, uh, the color are converted to the intent of the document. So if your uh, document are just in a, uh, in an, in a, you know, uh, sorry, in the document, uh, sorry, uh, I, I don't remember. Oh, sorry, I'm, uh, with this window, it's, it's difficult to, to see. So if uh, the blend workspace is in RGB, by default, that will be RGB. If it's in CMYK, that will be CMYK. So here you have the choice. So by default, it's the, the, the default of your document, but that could be exactly what you want. I already have the question several times, so now I pawn that. And by the way, you have the, uh, the ability also to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to pick over color and to, uh, and, to, uh, and to apply this color to your environment, to the text, to the, the, the contour and to the fill environment. So uh, Rufus Dushler will will do uh, will do a session uh, more deeply on this on this part. But that was just to to show you uh, where the thing happened in InDesign. And I will will come back at the end of this session to show you uh, personal uh, 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 tips I, I used to. Uh, to quickly make some some variation, uh, some test regarding the color of uh, a spread a double page in InDesign. So I use uh, Illustrator. I will use Illustrator for that uh, later. So here I'm in Photoshop. Uh, we uh, we didn't have by default this uh, Adobe Color uh, theme panel. But you could have that in an extension. Uh, so, for example, there Adobe Color Theme is there. Why? Because I I asked to uh, browse the add-ons online through the help menu, and in the add-ons uh, section. So, because I, I came on this website through the uh, help Photoshop menu, it's already filtered just only for Photoshop, and you can say uh, color CC and you will find uh, quickly Adobe Color CC and you can download it for free uh, clicking there uh, to have access of this one inside of Photoshop. So uh, like also in InDesign, I didn't show you, show you that in InDesign but you have that also in InDesign, you have the CC libraries. So let's, let's, uh, let's make a uh, just uh, a clear uh, a clear explanation sorry a clear explanation there uh, quick explanation there you have your uh, creative cloud uh, files folder where if you put uh, a file on it uh, this file uh, will be available uh, when you're logged in uh, in any computer any browser or any uh, application uh, you're logged in and your uh, phone a smartphone or, or over but it's the entire file the Creative Cloud libraries are more some some pieces, you know. For example, uh, if I'm going there, for example, in my libraries, I have access to color color theme. So I put I put some color theme uh, from my iPhone. So uh, let me show you uh, how to put some color theme from my iPhone. So I, I forget to show you that. So let me just open my uh, my iPhone there. So and uh, and uh, and pick the Adobe uh, Color uh, CC uh, app. So here you have uh, you have the application and you have the same uh, library there. So sorry, it's in French. So I can create there uh, a library. Uh, let's say 
master of class 2 and let's say OK. So now I have an empty library where I can put uh, colors, shape, brushes for Illustrator, InDesign, layers, vector, shape from Illustrator, from InDesign, uh, text, and stuff like that. So if I say, OK, I would like to grab a picture. So here, uh, here a little bit of my setup. For example, if, I, if I'm in, in an outside environment, I can say, OK, let's, let's use this picture. So I tap once, and now, it takes the picture, and I can pick the right color I need, right there, and and use that. So I I have there uh, my color wheel. I have there my rules. I have there some uh, some value in uh, in hexadecimal or value or RGB. And if I say okay, let's say term two. Now it's already saved in my masterclass uh, libraries. See if I just refresh my libraries, it's already there with my theme. So I can use that in InDesign, in Photoshop, in Illustrator, in After Effects also, uh, really easily. Yeah. So here was the Creative Cloud libraries uh, and uh, and the user. So here I have uh, again also uh, my extension Adobe Color Themes. And, uh, and you have this swatches panel. So let's pick a color. And now we also have, um, you know, an update in, uh, in, uh, in an update of uh, CC 2014, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the 2014 release of, uh, of uh, Photoshop CC, and we have now, uh, uh, you know, a, a panel you can open uh, largely, and you have now, like in the color picker, the U cube and brightness cube available to pick your color without having to close and to open your color picker, close, open again, again. So you could leave that open in the screen screen, in this screen, uh, like you want. So that's a first. Uh, first thing uh, regarding uh, the color, but the the most uh, the most convenient way to to play with uh, with color in a, in a, in in, um, in Photoshop will be perhaps uh, use saturation. If you already have a picture and you just want to modify, you just want to adjust uh, this picture. So here you can just offset the view of your picture 100 plus 180 degrees or less. Uh, you can colorize that, so all the color will be transformed in a cameo, so with different kind of lightness and brightness. Uh, there, so that's uh, that's one thing. Another another possible thing is also to use uh, because we told uh, we talked uh, about uh, about uh, about uh, um, you know movies and uh, the color grading. So Photoshop also have uh, the color lookup uh, lookup table. So we have that uh, look. We name that also cube, uh, uh, free free DL and stuff like that. So uh, that's to simulate, you know, uh, a whole movie uh, film, uh, all film, uh, all negative, and uh, and also some uh, some color grading from the cinema. So you have uh, several ones there. Uh, you have uh, you can pick your home uh, in the custom one. You have different uh, kind of atmosphere possible there to add, you know, a look. To your, uh, to your, to your, uh, to your, to your image. So, but if you are more a painter, a digital painter, you need to have a tool uh, with, uh, with, uh, with brushes. So, for example, uh, rectangular marquee tool didn't have brushes. So, you have uh, some tool with brushes. So, if you have a tool with brushes, you can. Uh, let me just uh, open there. Um, my shortcut, you can use uh, on Macintosh uh, this, uh, this uh, shortcut uh, there to, uh, to, uh, to pick your color. But if you really want, for example, this saturation luminosity, but you want to change the, uh, the, the hue, the tint, uh, guess what? You lose it when you want to, to switch to, uh, from the, uh, the square to, uh, to the circle. So you need to add another key, which is a spacebar, so that frees temporarily the, uh, the, the, the movement. Outside the square, you can leave, and now you can change your U. And again, if I want to come back to adjust the luminosity, I can do that and, and do that. So uh, here, the, the, the shortcut is complex. Uh, on Windows, uh, that will be Alt, Shift, 
and right click, not left click, right click. Uh, but uh, we can't change because uh, Photoshop uh, already have a bunch, a bunch, uh, a lot of shortcut. And every time we want to ch uh, to change some uh, some shortcut, that could be uh, that could be you know a real debate and a, and a, and a real frustration for a lot of our customers. So you can change that uh, that behavior in your keyboard shortcuts if you want, or uh, if you have if you are a digital painter, you uh, you have Wacom uh, devices like like uh, Cintiq or like an Intuos Pro. So in this case, you have some button you can customize your button, uh, adding the shortcut inside a button, and you will have the ability to click on this button and automatically this color wheel will happen. By default, uh, be aware that uh, if I go in the in the um, in the preference of Photoshop, uh, general preference, command K, control key, by default it's not the U wheel, it's a U strip like in the color picker. So you need to switch back if you want to have exactly the same as me. So let's quit uh, for now Photoshop and let's come back now to the most powerful tool uh, about uh, color, which is Illustrator. So you didn't have a color theme, uh, Adobe color theme uh, in Illustrator, but you have uh, a, a tool name uh, color uh, color theme, not Adobe color theme. Small differences. Uh, you have this this same panel in After Effects, for example. Uh, small differences. You have just access to all your uh, your Adobe uh, your color.adobe.com website color theme, not the collections. Uh, you have also have your libraries and you have also your 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 collections there, but you did not have uh, uh, the, um, the, the, the color wheel there with uh, explore and stuff like that because you have a most powerful tool ever inside. Uh, I don't want to say, uh, you know, Adobe Color CC is uh, less powerful. Adobe Color, uh, the, the goal of Adobe Color CC is just to capture inspiration. That's the reason why it's on iPhone. Uh, uh, iPhone, iPad, etc. Uh, we already uh, uh, told in FAQ that uh, we're also working on Android uh, version. So you also know the workaround. You can use your your web your uh, our website uh, on your Android phone to uh, to um, to use uh, to use a photo took with your Android. Uh, you can upload that in the in the website and use that I, I like a walk around uh, waiting for the android version uh, so here uh, you, you don't need because we have uh, we have a, a tool which is named recolor at work which is really way 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 more powerful and you are not limited to five color the reason why is because illustrator is a, cre uh, a creative uh, tool but also a productive tool so you need to have uh, a lot of variety but capturing uh, capturing an inspiration five color really uh, is really enough uh, so that's the reason why you didn't have that uh, in Illustrator. you have also a really powerful tool to 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 find some uh, interesting uh, color which you name color guide so i will start with this one for example so when you want to pick uh, an, an color harmony rule First, you need to pick and to choose your, your first color of inspiration. So, for example, I will say, okay, I want this, this kind of blue for, for, my, for my stuff, or I would like to have this, this kind of yellow, little bit orange. So, this, this color is your, your choice again. Now, up to you to choose uh, an harmony rules. So, here you have more harmony rules than I, I demonstrate uh, before in my slides, but a lot of are just variation around these primary rules. So, for example, there, you don't need to know every rules, just pick the one inspiring you. For example, compound tool seems great for me. By default, you, you have there your rules, you have also in a column there under the, this active arrow, and you have some variation. Normally, you, you didn't have, you have four variation uh, on the left, four variation on the right, uh, but it's up to you in the color guide option to say more or less color. By default, it's this one, and by default, it's 100%. So you're really cold uh, and, uh, and you are really warm there, but you can say, okay, I don't want to to start at this level of coldness or uh, warmness. So up to you, and up to you also to to, to create the, the number of steps you, you want and you need. So I will now pick with a command uh, click or control click on Windows, different color in these propositions. So just up to me, just, just again, just an inspiration, but I pick what I want and I leave the other. So with that in mind, I can create 
uh, their my uh, uh, you know um, uh, swatches group to to use later like 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 a reference, or I could also use for example a different color like that. Uh, again, come on, click or control click, and just uh, click there to have a visual representation. So by default, that will be open like that. So you have two tab, edit and assign. Because I have no selection, assign doesn't doesn't work. It's it's a normal uh, normal behavior. And here I can I can use. So by default, this rule because that was based on a rule. This rule is, is preserved. But if you break the link there, you can just say, okay, I want just this color and you can modify all the stuff. So you have uh, the possibility to, to work in different uh, environments. So by default there, with this button, you, you have uh, on, on the color wheel, you have only saturation and new. And the brightness is there because it's a 2D representation of free concept. But if you want to have uh, brightness and new, you are there and the saturation will be there. So it's up to you after that to, to move there your freely your 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 swatches. Uh, or if you press you hold on the shift key and move uh, move around, that will keep the same level of saturation and just move the U. Or if you move at the opposite, uh, not in the circle movement, but at the opposite, you will keep the U and move the brightness because I mean the U brightness or the saturation so you can just switch quickly between that to find the proper color or just play with uh, with this slider you have different representation also but uh, I will uh, leave that for uh, for the session or for you here I'm just on inspirational stuff uh, and that's what I want like to do you can add more color because I'm and there are no in recolor artwork stuff so you can add you can uh, delete you can uh, use right click and remove you can uh, save as default your reference color so you can do a lot of stuff and if that's uh, the group is okay for you you can rename it and you can create another group uh, to use as a reference uh, for the future so let's see an application so here's the great uh, great example um, created by uh, Jean Bay, a friend of mine, Aka Easy Design, uh, to illustrate uh, this uh, this uh, use case. For example, if I would like to uh, to, to create, for example, an orange, uh, an orange stuff like that, and I would like to use some harmony rule. For example, let's say a right complementary. So it seems great for me there, right there. Uh, so I have a representation there. I would like to. To pick some some color to use in my design, I would like to have a majority of bluish, you know, color, color and I, I could add that uh, there. So now, if I select all of my design, select also now the folder, I can recolor artwork. So let's be sure that you use uh, color harmony to be to be sure. Sometimes um, you have all reduced to to several several color so you can see all the color are associated to some some of our color so let's let's uh, do it do that again and uh, let's pick color harmony rule and with this one okay it's okay so that just to let you know that you have the, the choice and we will uh, filter that by light and darken and here by like to darken so here we have some color so i would like to to play a little bit and to see what's uh, what the illustrator could propose to me so here this is one proposal which is which is uh, which is nice and i could play with that to find a uh, color uh, i like i pretty like this one so i can memorize this uh, in another one, and I can also play with uh, randomly change the, the, the saturation and brightness on this one. And I can to enhance and to play a little bit with this one. This one looks like perfect. Perhaps there in the horn, I need perhaps to to make some adjustment later. But that I like this this one. Let's pretend I would like to uh, to to make some new uh, new try, but I don't want to touch this one. If you take a look there. Uh, you have this orange. Uh, I, you you can expect that this this is this one. So if I would like to be sure, I can click on this one and and be sure if it's the right one I I would like. So in grayscale, sometimes it's completely it's it's uh, it's uh, difficult to to play with that. So for example, in a horn, uh, I know now that this one 
and I can I can sorry I can play uh, breaking the, the the link there I can play just with this one to to play and to add for example more light and stuff like that but now I would like to to play with uh, this other one which is uh, viewed but I don't want to this one will be modified in my next random so I can click on this arrow to 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 say I don't want to 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 move this one and I can play like you can see there I can play with that I can play with that and sometime if something happen and I'd like let's play again a little bit let's play let's play with this one again and I can stop when I want here I'm still looking for something I'd like let's play a little bit with that uh, let's say okay for that and I can after all uh, change the value and say it's okay for me now so now I have a proposal and I can now just select the background and and start again just for the background and start again to to play with different uh, kind of color for example and trying to arrange it to fix uh, what's important for me for example so that's it for for, 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 for that part for this one and now I would like to 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 go in another uh, sample. For example, here this is a uh, uh, this is an uh, an, an comic book page, uh, and by default uh, this uh, this paging uh, will be this hand result. But before that, when you prepare your stuff, you prepare your 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 principal uh, color, uh, and uh, perhaps at this stage I would like to to make some test regarding my color. So for that. Have the ability to uh, to to import. I really did that to uh, um, uh, to avoid to to lose time. Uh, I would like to uh, to play with that. So let's let's say, for example, this is an image imported, embedded, but that could be linked. I already applied an image trace. So in the menu window, you'll find image trace, and I already applied a preset, which was by default uh, says colors. And after that, I hop a little bit the number at 30, uh, 30, 30 color. And here I have, uh, you know, an image tracing, which is live. I need to break that uh, using the uh, expand button to have this end result, which is a full vector shape I could use uh, in my, uh, with my uh, recolor artwork there. So here I can, for example, use in the edit menu or for example there and uh, pick the global adjust value and for example I can quickly and easily warm my environment or perhaps it could be more cold so again if I don't want the skin will move I can say okay I would like to, to go in assign and uncheck the, the color skin and that's it you can easily uh, make some variation I promise to to come back in uh, in uh, in uh, in design and for example here this is a this is a pages with a lot of blocks a lot of font lots of color there is also some picture but I didn't want to take care there I just want uh, in my color guide in my uh, my uh, design reference uh, to make some tests regarding this color and this uh, this spread so uh, it's pretty easy to export that as a PDF uh, for print, for example, and to say, uh, for example, here I already uh, saved a, a, a PDF presets named Quick uh, Color Test I for Illustrator, uh, and I check spread and just really, really uh, don't sampling at uh, 72 pixels because I don't want to touch the color in this case. I just want to to make some arrangement with color. Um, uh, using all the vector and type is vector. So I already did that. So if I'm going back there, so my PDF is there, my only my spread. So I I put that on Illustrator. So yes, it's MYK. Uh, and I have the ability to say select all. Remember when you export a PDF, there is a clipping group. So just choose edit content. And now you can use your recolor artwork. And you can see there, perhaps this is too close color, so let me just put these two one together to simplify my color wheel. And now I have the ability to go in the edit menu and to to make some shows, to, to try some stuff, uh, to perhaps to, to, to pick over color arrangement, perhaps to go back to a sign, and perhaps again to make some tests with saturation, with luminosity, and find a proper thing 
after all, I can use my CC libraries to to uh, to share and uh, my CC libraries to share this color with uh, with InDesign and uh, or in the old way, I can also export a library as an ASE, ASE sorry, Adobe Swiss Action and import that in our software to have a consistent value between my different usage. So with that, uh, I will uh, I will quit there. And uh, and uh, and thanks again for for watching this uh, this session this seminar, and and I hope you enjoy you learn something. Uh, my uh, my Twitter account is s b a r i l Stefan Baril. I will leave that uh, in the commentary of this uh, YouTube video and some link. Uh, if you take a look at my uh, delicious inspired take a take a look at the tag uh, inspired by color. So let me just jump there so uh, daily issues inspired by color this uh, this addresses you have you will find a, a different link and on my bins you have a collection uh, which is uh, in the same uh, hashtag uh, tag inspired by color and you will find a lot a lot of colorful artists so i think i have that uh, in this link you you will find color topic on bins and that's it. Uh, hope you enjoy and thank you for watching.